All right, so let's start out by, um, with our project, looking at some software options that you can use for graphing and for getting your number summaries and things of that nature. Now, I did make a valiant effort at trying SPSS. And you know what? It's a great software package if you're an advanced statistician. Um, but what we needed it to do was some very straightforward and basic things. And it was just layer upon layer of extra complexity. So I kind of had to abandon that. So um, I started to think what might actually go easier for you than something of that nature. I mean, you can download SPSS and you can get a 30 day trial from it's IBM SPSS and you can play around with it and see if you can make it work. I mean, I can make it work at least for most of what we need but it's just, I thought, I'm just gonna leave people crying. So I thought, well, what could be better than that? And that would be your calculator. So if you have an Inspire, um, just regular CX, then you might consider downloading the TI Inspire Computer Link software. And this is gonna be good for a CX calculator, a CX CAS, and one of the older kind that look kind of like this big keypad or this big keyhole, um, the ones that came before the CX's, but it's not gonna work for you for the CX2. So this is where you would get it, you download it, um, and it's really going to not bother you for codes or you don't have to pay for it. Just download Windows or Mac and off you go, all right? So what is it gonna look like when you do this on your calculator. So let's get to TI. And here we go. It's uh, TI Tools, I believe. And here's your T, um, TI Computer Link software. There it is. And it's going to take a minute to open. Um, what I did was I put a bunch of things into, and I have my um, calculator hooked up. So let's see if we can't get it to discover it. Hit refresh, select. Okay, perfect. Now you can upgrade the operating system and do all kinds of things, but what all I wanna do is screen capture, okay? So um, let's see, I went ahead and just go ahead and click on this. And I'm just showing you that I put in data from June of 1969 to June of 2019 for our temperature um, bivariate um, project. And so, but I'm really not going to be putting this into my, um, my work. What I wanna do is get my scatter plot in there. So I just changed to a scatter plot and let's see if I can get that to show. Okay, there's a scatter plot. And let's see, I also would like to get my summary values you know, uh, my regression, A and B and R and R squared and all of that. So there's that, okay? So then I'm gonna go back into my scatter plot and I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to change this from a scatter plot to a residual plot, which means I've gotta change my Y variable to stat resid. Okay, there it is. I really don't need the, it's giving me an equation, so I'm just gonna grab it and maybe delete it and see if I can just get rid of it. Okay, and definitely get rid of the little hand. So, I mean, it's bad enough that you have the cursor here, but so I'm gonna take a screenshot of that and that's pretty much what I need. All right, I've got my LSRL. I've got A and B, R and R squared here. I've got my residual graph and all you gotta do is just pick one copy it, open up your favorite word processing program, and just paste it in. It's tremendous. It's the easiest thing ever, okay? So that's that. That's gonna be for your um, TI Inspire CX, or your if you have an older Inspire, all you need is a computer link uh, cable, which is, um, it's just a regular USB on one end, and the other end is a mini USB as opposed to a micro. The micros are a little smaller. But whatever you have here um, in your, your output, you can just grab it, copy it, and 
paste it in, right? And you can resize and move around. You know, if I text wrap and make it tight, then I can move it or I can make it smaller. See, a little smaller, then they can fit side by side. Anyway, that's gonna be good for your uh, Inspire CX. Okay, um, so I'm gonna get out of here. And for you guys with CX2s, I think I've been mentioning that you can um, get that from the paperwork in your calculator, which I fear you probably threw away. Um, so what you can do instead, um, well, not instead, if you threw it away, it's kind of, you're kind of out of luck. But I'm gonna open up my teacher software and um, you know, basically the student software looks a lot like it. Uh, it does take a little while, so I will talk you through um, a little bit of this. But anyway, um, you can, let's see if I've got something saved here. Uh, you do get the, the calculator. So let's go to the home screen. And let's see what I've got for files. Uh, let's open documents. And it works a lot better here than it does at school. So here's a scatter plot. Remember the powerboat registrations and the manatees? And for here, you can just go ahead and go home and get your, let's see, we're using registrations to predict manatee deaths, right? And um, so there's that. We can, uh, I think we can overlay the, let's see if it'll let us do the regression. Um, no, that's not what I want. I want to analyze. So regression and show linear A plus BX. Okay, so there it is. And I don't know, I guess you still need your summary numbers. So I'm going to go home and scoot over to here and hit enter. And that'll just be menu, statistics, stat, stat calc, linear regression A plus BX. I want registration to predict manatee deaths. And let's see, tab, 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 hit OK. All right. Um, so now I'm getting a whole bunch of these windows and whatnot, and um, you can just go ahead up here, and this has the same tools, I believe, as uh, the teacher in the student version. Just do a screen capture, capture page, and it doesn't look like it did anything. But if you come down here, uh, whoops, that's not what I want. I want this. You've got a second window now, and it's got this, and you can just copy and paste it. I can also, you know, control arrow up and scoot over to my scatter plot. If I can get over there, there it is. No, that's not it. Here it is. And again, uh, screen capture. There it's your screen capture, capture page. You can do it under tools. And now both of those should be there. Okay. And we can also go ahead and uh, let's minimize this change this to stat resid and uh, we can get rid of this so hold on to that see if it'll grab it see if we can just delete it okay gone and so now again capture and it should be all whoops didn't capture that one let's try it again all right um, tools screen capture capture page Let's see if it grabbed it. Okay, so there's all three of those things. Probably what you need for your project. Okay, I just wanted to slip something into this video, sort of um, with the calculator stuff. Um, some of the graphs that your calculator make are really good. Like I love the um, the scatter plots. I love the box plots. Um, I'm, the histograms are a little dicey, so just kind of want to, I put, I, I put my usual sodium data in here, and I'm going to try to lead you through the process of how to make a reasonable box plot. So I'm going to go and open up a stats graph, and this is going to be sodium. And I don't have a Y variable, so I'm just going to go ahead and select my plot. And, you know, the box plot's going to look great. Okay, it's skewed to the right, you've got an outlier, you can figure out which one it is, and so forth. So 
that's not a problem. It just kind of comes up exactly the way you would want it. And so you can just go ahead and do a screenshot. So capture page and hopefully it is now part of this. So there you go. And that can go right into your, into your work. But a histogram, like I said, is a little bit more problematic. So let's go ahead and choose one. All right, this is way too many classes. All right, I've got 40 data values. So, um, you know, according to what we did when we learned to do these by hand, you know, if you have eight or less, then it's three. If you have 16 or less, it's four. 32 or less, it's five. So this should be around five or six with 40 data points. So let's see what I can do here. So menu, um, plot properties, histogram properties, all right, bin settings. Now histogram scale is not too helpful. You can just change from percent to frequency to density, whatever, all right? But I just wanna keep it frequency. So I want equal bin widths. So the width, okay, since I want six of these, um, and I'm going from zero, I think up to like 1620 or so. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that that's gonna be 1620. I'm doing this on my own calculator divided by 6.0. So that's about 270 bin width. So I think I'm gonna do like 280. Let's try that. 280 and the alignment means yeah are you starting at zero I am and I'm gonna hit OK all right that's pretty good all right the problem here is that I'm not seeing the upper part of it so I'm guessing maybe this is going up to around 10 so let's see if I can change the window setting and um, window settings so I'm gonna do my Y max I'm gonna change that to let's say 15 and my X min I don't know what it's doing at negative 50 let's try 0 and see what that does okay that's looking pretty presentable it's not really showing an outlier but um, you know you can back it up with your box plot to show that you've got one so this is pretty good you see the skew to the right and what you had in your box plot so again I'm just going to snap a picture of that capture page and hopefully that'll be in with the other one right so these are both ready to go for my report so um, I'm gonna pause it here and I'm gonna start another video with some other options for online graphs and whatnot so stand by now if you have a TI 84 version calculator then that's a problem you're not going to be able to do this. So I'm going to have to show you um, a little stats package that I found. I'm going to reserve this for the second part of the video. But um, hey, so far I've got the CX2s and the CXs. Of course, you do need a Mac or you do need a Windows machine to get this done. But it's really going to be great. And these are pretty much exactly what we want, you know, for graphics. So I'm going to go ahead and pause. All right, I'm back. I just want to make sure it looks like we're running. Um, so the second thing, another option that you have if you just can't make your calculator work is this little cheesy program that I uh, found years ago called Smith Statistical Package. And I'm just going to kind of be winging it here. So I may be um, hitting the uh, pause button and trying to work out why I can't make something work or whatnot. But if you just go ahead and do a search on Smith statistical package, which I have here, um, it comes up in a bunch of places, but probably this economics files, blah, 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 Gary Smith software is what you want. All right. And there's a bunch of things, stat game, stat quiz, um, interesting sort of things. Uh, we want SSP. It comes in Windows and Mac. I can't demonstrate the Mac because I don't have one. So I'm going to click on Windows and I'm just going to go ahead and save that guy. And all right, this browser is extra careful for me, but I do want to, to show this. So we'll open it. 
and it comes as a zip file and if you just go ahead and open it to where you can see the contents you can just go ahead and copy this and just get out of your browser we don't need that anymore and just paste it to your desktop and it doesn't install you know for all you might want to say that you don't like about it it does not install so when you get done with it just throw it away you're not going to get any garbage in your computer left over from it so here it is and when you open this up you just click on the exe file not this one but the one with the little triangular uh, i guess the little colored things and it opens up like a spreadsheet if this happens just hit more info and run it anyway it's not going to hurt anything okay so smith statistical package um don't know when he wrote this uh it's been a while Let's see if he has an about well not really so um here you would define your variable and just get your cursor here and you know go ahead and clear it out and type in what you want whatever it might be but i'm actually going to paste in or open some data i have before so i hit no and i want data for project okay so i've got three columns here this is sodium for mcdonald's and i'm going to start with that because this is going to be um, for your fast food project. I don't have like sodium for some other restaurant, all right? I'm not doing the project, you are. So there's a couple of things you can do. Under describing data, you can go ahead and do median and quartiles for sodium. Don't pick any other variable, hit okay. And it's from what, one down to 40, that's okay. Okay. So minimum, maximum, median, third quartile, fourth quartile, interquartile range. You probably want that for your summary. And you can get a box, box plot. So you can copy this down. You could get it off your calculator, whatever you want to do. But what you probably ought to do here is just go ahead. Well, one thing you can do is if you have a snippy tool like this, screen snip, um, you can go ahead and just copy this and get it up to where you can see it here in the snipping tool. Um, you can save it and then paste it in as an image. I'm going to try copy and see if I can't get it into the document. If I can't, then that's fine. I'll just go ahead and save it as an image. So let's see if I can paste it. Oh, it was there. I promise you. All right. That might be a tad big. Oh, you can, have, you can resize it and you know make it look a little better. So let's see what else we've got here. Uh, let's go to box plot. Now there is a box plot. It's not glorious, but it is a box plot. Now it looks like you probably have outliers, but you're not seeing them. So what you do is click and show outliers. Yes, okay. Um, I had better luck with this, saving this, First of all, it's got what, save graph? Um, don't do that. Um, well, yeah, no, don't do that, okay? Um, I would probably try the snipper again, so screen snip. And let's see if we can make this one work. I had trouble with it earlier. All right, and so I'm gonna ditch this because we don't need that anymore and make this bigger. And I'm gonna see what happens when I copy it. Now, if it doesn't work for, oh, and you got to watch out. If you hit, you know, just click in here, it's going to put a point. Like you can actually draw in there if you want. But now I'm just going to go ahead and copy it and see if that'll paste in properly. So let's see here. Paste. Ooh, it did. Okay, good. All right, and you can certainly resize this and then, you know, text wrap uh, tight. Um, tight here and then you can just put it wherever you want okay so there's a modified box plot so we've got part of our number summaries and a modified box plot so let's excuse me let's get out of here we've already seen that and let's see what else we've got um, we have a histogram and we want it for sodium so hit okay 1 through 40 yes 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 
All right, these are kind of what your frequencies are gonna look like in your um, the bars or in the classes. And so there you go. Now it's not perfect. Like this doesn't touch perfectly. This maybe overlaps a little too much, but it's okay, all right? So you can click on this and you can change the bars. I haven't played with that too much, but show the bell curve and okay. And then you just do the snippy thing again. So let's see if we can get this to work. Great, okay. Um, yeah, we're done with the box plot. So let's get into this one and let's go ahead and copy and see if we get what we want in our, yeah, that's fine. Let's just paste and see what happens. Okay, good. There's your histogram, all right? So you've got that along with a superimposed um, curve to see the skew, all right? So um, that's just gonna tell you the frequency within the intervals, so we don't need that. And let's see what else we've got. Um, uh, bar chart, no. Histogram, uh, we did that. Box plot, we did that. Mean and variance, all right, for sodium. And there you go. You have mean, variance, standard deviation, and the skewed coefficient, and they can discuss that here. And you can go ahead and do the same snippy on it, screen snip, and just do that. And you got just about everything you could want. Now you don't have range and some other things, but you can get those off your calculator if you want. And you can just go ahead and copy and paste that. So I'm just going to get rid of that because we don't need to keep doing it over and over. Okay, um, one other thing you can do is with a box plot is um, you can have more than one. So if I'm gonna compare 1969 with uh, 2019, I can go ahead and do both of them and hit okay, one through 29, and there they are. Um, I think we can show the outliers and I don't think we have outliers for that one. So there it is, it's labeled and everything. I mean, you don't have a label for the axis here. That's not the greatest thing. But once again, you can go ahead and screen snip and put that thing into your, into your report. All right, so this is not the best thing ever, but it's, it's doable. It's pretty doable. So let's make sure that'll uh, paste itself in there. Oh, everything is working. Could it be? Could it be? Okay, so you can size that just like you were doing with the other things. Okay, um, so uh, we need regression things, all right? So we don't have anything here. You, you have a scatter diagram, but let's not do it here. Let's go to statistical imp uh, inference and do a simple regression. Um, they want the dependent variable, that's always the output, and that'll be 2019. We're using 1969 to predict 2019, at least in my data. And then the uh, dependent, uh, let's see, the independent variable is gonna be 1969, okay. One through 29. All right, so um, here is what you need. Remember your A and your B and your R squared and all of that. For some reason, it doesn't give you the other parentheses here. Whoops, <laughs> I told you this is a little cheesy. But one thing you might wanna check off, you probably should, is to put the residuals Y hat in your spreadsheet. Yes, definitely want that. And we want it under some blank, so we're gonna put it under variable four. And so there are all your residuals. Perfect, okay? Um, so now we, we have, um, let's see, I believe that that is, you know, your output. So let's go ahead and graph it. And so there it is, and it superimposes the line. I think if you go under here and do the scatter diagram, it does not superimpose the line, okay? And um, results, so you're gonna need this. Let's see, we'll probably do a snip on this. All right, and you can then paste it into your document. So I'm just gonna get rid of that, all these things. And uh, in your graph, you're gonna probably wanna do a snip of that. 
and put that into your document. All right, this one I think I will copy and make sure it'll go into the document. And let's see, um, where's my cursor? All right, there, and so Control V. And there you go, it looks good. It actually looks pretty good. Uh, there's there's just no kind of garbagey things. Oh, the only other thing while I'm thinking about it is you can use this for a residual graph. All right, so let's get rid of this and um, let's get rid of that and let's go ahead and do another simple regression. Only this time we're going to uh, do our dependent is 2019 but our independent is going to be the y minus y hat. That's the residuals and okay. And no, we don't wanna do anything more with that. So let's go ahead and find the graph. Oh, it didn't do it. Why didn't it do it? Oh, this is reversed, that's why. So let's try that again. Let's see if we can't get that again. So simple regression dependent variable that's the same oh okay y minus y hat is the dependent that's my bad and the independent should be the regular independent 1969 and there we go okay and it gives you the zero line too which is pretty nice and you screen snip that bad boy just like this and you can cut and paste it in so um, I'm pretty sure that you can do whatever you want with this program, all right? Um, it's just a little bit, uh, I don't know, it's a little grumpy sometimes. Um, you gotta be careful to put your data in properly. And, um, you know, but if you have any questions, you can come back to this video and sort of watch me do it over again. Um, what I wanna do for the third and final video, which I think I'm going to do separately, is see what we can manage for you guys that are clinging like um, desperately to your Chromebooks. And I think that we can at least get some histograms out of um, uh, Google Sheets. I don't know that we can do um, any scatter plots in it. Um, I know you can do a scatter plot in Excel, um, but yeah, I don't know about just putting data in and getting a scatter plot. But I'll play around a little bit with it and try to wring out the most I can get and see what I can do. So on that note, I'm going to get out of here. And uh, no, I don't want to save it actually. See, it gives you blank things that you can just hit OK or close that out. And no, I don't want to save. And so um, good luck getting started with this. And it's not closing. Ah, silly. But anyway, there, it go there you go. There are two options for you, and I'm going to call it.